now we're ready to start drawing this hand. So take a look at this hand here. What we're looking for is what is the pointer finger doing and then everything else will determine that afterwards. Again, I have her pointer finger just a little bit off of her skin so I can draw clothes underneath that. So I want her pointer finger somewhere out here off the skin. So we come down and we have this is one wrist width here, same as there. We have that um, pivot point. That's going to be her pointer. The underside scoops down and it's coming back. Here's arc A. So the webbing cuts inside of arc A, so come all the way back inside of arc A. And again, the width that we have from here to here is the same as her wrist from there to there. And now we have the middle finger is back here, and it's going to cut down. And this will connect back to her wrist. So you can see the middle finger is just a bump heading down and it disappears. For her thumb, what we're doing is the thumb is relaxing inwards. So what I like to do is here's the webbing from her pointer finger. Her thumb is going to be tucked inside of here somewhere and it's coming out to arc B and then here it is at the wrist, we cut away, we come out, we head back for the thumb. And then as it rolls in, you're starting to see more of the thumbnail. So put like a three-quarter view thumbnail on there. And that's good enough for now. Once we go back and we start to darken everything with our uh, darker pencil, we'll go in and we can start fixing stuff and emphasize a little more details. So the next arm, what we're doing here is it's hiding behind her body. And um, usually you don't want to hide your arm behind the body because if you're drawing clothes, really you want to show people the clothes so then somebody at a sample room can make exactly what you want. But this does, sometimes this does look cute when she has her hand a little bit behind her body like this. So it's pretty simple. Her elbow is right up against her waist here. So even though we know there's a guideline to come in here and find where the elbow would be, we're just putting the elbow right here at the waist. Then we can come in and we can find the center of the armhole and aim back towards that for the center of the elbow joint. Then we want to know, well, where is her wrist going to be? And I have her wrist just barely showing off the side of her leg here. So let's go ahead and erase some of this older information. And noticing here that this is the full hip. So I can never um, go inside or outside of that. I have to come in and hit that guideline. So I want her wrist somewhere outside of that. The next thing we need to know is, well, how far down is it? So it's going to be one head down after the elbow joint. So put in that joint there. We can draw a line that's going to go cutting behind her hip. And then we know it's her forearm is one head, so I can, again, I can come from the bottom of the rib cage to the full hip. This is one head out to here. This would be her forearm inside of here. Now we have the wrist joint. And then for this hand, basically it's just dropping down. So from the wrist joint, I'll go ahead and just draw something that's pretty much straight down.
And then we can come in here and find the length of the hand. So again, here would be the top of the cylinder. It's three quarters of a head, so get your three quarters of the head, come down here. Divide this in half. Now we can double check our wrist width to make sure it's correct. And then the forearm will know what to aim for. So let's get the upper arm first and then we'll, we can come in and get the rest of the forearm here. So for the upper arm, we want to do the same upper arm as this one. Double check now that you love this one. <clears throat> for me, it's almost too skinny. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my girl's upper arm just a titch uh, wider. So then I can duplicate the same thing here. Now, if you remember, her rib cage here is going to be in front of the arm. So it's all in front of the arm right there. But you still want to have a good sense of this is her upper arm heading towards the armhole on the inside. This is on the outside. These lines are parallel. They're the same width as this arm here. Get a really good sense of both sides of that. So do like a little see-through view before you come in and finally determine this is what her upper arm is doing. And then once you can see that, you can erase this old view right here. Now we know how wide to make her forearm down here. Again, we're going to curve inwards for the joint, just like her waist. And then we can connect for a plain heart shape down here to the wrist. And everything else is hiding behind there. So the only thing left now is to draw the hand. On this model here, for the hand behind her, I was starting to draw the elegant hand, but realistically all it should be is just the closing hand, and all we're going to see is just this bump coming up and back down. So here's the wrist bone. This is the top of the hand. This is um, the middle arc A, arc B. So this is your first set of knuckles. That's your second set. What we can do is we can just have the top of the hand hit this first set of knuckles, bend towards B, and bend again towards her leg, and it's hidden behind her leg. Done. That could be just a quick, easy, cheater way to do it. Now something that you would still kind of see is a little bit of the width of a finger coming up and back. So just a hint of showing that, that webbing right there. Just barely hinting on that. And again, once we start finalizing and drawing with our darker pencil, we'll go ahead and we'll tweak this one last time. What I would recommend right now is, before we start going into our darker number two pencil, I want to start just erasing extra lines, extra details and whatever, um, so we can come in here and just clean up and get only what we want. At the same time, don't erase too much because you have to keep your guidelines on here and we're going to put them back into place. So don't erase all of your guidelines. I'm just talking about if things got a little bit messy, like I feel like her hand's a little bit messy. And I just want to come in and just clean up a couple areas before we go on to the next part.
Okay, so I went in, I did a couple little tweaking and fine tuning to my hands with the, um, the 1H pencil. And then I erase a little bit of stuff, but I left all my guidelines. I'm ready now to go in and we're gonna start darkening this in. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here to the bottom of her swimsuit and go ahead and put that on her. And then we'll start darkening in her skin all around that. So get your number two pencil nice and sharp. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and start to draw all of this so it looks like she's wearing a pair of underwear. So down at the bottom of the swimsuit, I like to just round it down lightly. And then let's get the outside edge. So draw this in here once cleanly and extend it just a little beyond her skin. And then so the binding on her swimsuit, it would be wide here, but as it goes between the legs, it will disappear. And again, extend it so it's a little bit outside of her skin area. Then what we can do is here at the um, high hip, so this would be the top of your skirts, the top of your jeans, this, this line right here. We can also make it look like it's the top of her underwear. And it also acts as a guideline for when you're drawing. Now the side edges here, Make sure they're sticking out, again, a little bit higher than her skin, so to the outside. So it's always a, just a titch bigger than what her skin is. Now that we've completed this, we can go ahead and finish drawing in the rest of the outside of her legs and also working with what's going on with her hands. So this one here, her hand is behind her leg. So I can come in and I can draw the full leg all the way to where it's going under the swimsuit and I'm hitting my guideline widths. Then this one here is gonna go behind this hand so I would actually prefer to draw the hand first and draw the leg second. So remember on her wrist, there's no bone here on the inside, so you would just go from the forearm right into the thumb. But the outside here, there's that wrist bone sticking up. So the forearm would come down, hits this wrist bone, then the top of her hand would also come out of that. This is her middle finger here. And this is her pointer finger here. Now that I have her hand completed, I can finish drawing the skin, making sure I'm hitting the correct marks here for the width at the full hip, and then continuing the original leg that I was drawing back down into the knee. This hand is going behind this leg, so at this point now I can finish drawing it as well. So here's the little webbing for basically all of her fingers. This is the top knuckle. This is the second knuckle. Then we're gonna come in here, there's the wrist bone, and then the top of her hand, and the top of her forearm. I could continue drawing this upper arm, so this will curve in right here, and we'll take this all the way up to the shoulder.
The next thing I want to do is, for the advanced version, I'm going to teach you how to draw the armpit right here. So basically, as you're coming up, her ribs, let me switch my glasses. So as we're coming up from the rib cage up to number two, this is the bottom of the armhole. It's also her armpit. You're going to just cut into the arm like that, and this is now in front of her arm. And we'll do the same thing over here, but you'll notice this is getting kind of messy because we have a lot of stuff going on. So what I'll do is I'll erase that old armhole oval, and I'm going to come up here. Again, this is level two, and I'll do this a really small version of the armpit there. Again, her waist will curve in, her hip bones will go underneath her underwear. Then we want to find her belly button, so it's right here at three and a quarter. This is also the top of the hip bones. When I draw a belly button, sometimes I'll just draw like half of it instead of a whole complete circle. Up here at the shoulders, now you still have to have this line that goes all the way to the top of the shoulder. The reason is, is later on you're going to use this to draw clothes, and that's the seam on your shirt. So if you were drawing a t-shirt on your girl, that's the seam that separates the shirt from the sleeve. So we still have to keep that, so go ahead and draw the seam in here as well as keeping it here. And it's the same line that was coming all the way back down to the waist. Then let's finish this upper arm here. So we've already drawn it all in, I just need to make it darker. For her shoulders, remember they're curving outwards a little bit, but not too much because you want room to make an actual sleeve that comes out and you don't want your sleeves to get too far off of her body. The trapezius muscle will blend right into that and head towards the neck and it's going behind the neck. Oops, sorry. So you have to make sure that the trapezius muscle stops at the neck. And again, these um, we made a really long neck because the trapezius muscle is really slow, but that gives us room to have a collar on here. Now we pretty much have everything in its place. Because we're drawing a croquis for the fashion industry and you're going to use this to draw clothes, we need to have our guidelines on here. So for now, follow the ones I'm going to do. So let's come back in here to her shoulders and make that one darker. So this was one and a half heads down. And then skip this area for now because we're going to draw in here some more guidelines as well. Come all the way down to the bottom of the rib cage. So this was three heads down, three and a quarter was the top of the hip bones. If you do like a high-waisted pant, it would come all the way up to this area. And then we already have our guideline right here. And then uh, at four, make this dark, so this is her full hip. Down at six and a half. We're going to want a guideline that goes a little bit off of the body. So then when you're drawing skirt hems, you'll have a sense of what to aim for and to stop when you're doing like a skirt, knee length skirt or something. And then all the way down here, we already have our nine and a quarter. For me, I'm going to make my floor just a little darker. And if you look at these two models, you'll see they're slightly off. That's just back from when I was measuring three, six, nine, plus one was the floor. And you're a little bit off. This is totally fine because in the end, they'll look almost identical. And all of these areas will pretty much add up to being the same thing. So as a first semester student, I like for you guys to know where her waist is. Like I've said before, normally you don't shade anything on your croquis. 
But let's go ahead and shade the waist area just so it's inside your brain that that's her natural waist area. For the advanced croquis, we're not going to shade her elbow joints and wrist joints and knee joints and ankle joints and stuff. The next thing I want to do is we need to find our princess panel guidelines. So you can see here there's a panel guideline here as well as this one going up here. So let's switch back to our lighter pencil and we'll get these guidelines in lightly first. It's pretty simple. Basically, you come down here to the rib cage and heading halfway back towards center front on both sides. And then you come over here to two and a quarter. So this is her bust apex. You want to find halfway from her rib cage, halfway back towards center front. We can connect those with a ruler. Later on when you do poses that are moving and bending, you won't be able to connect it with a ruler. You'll just freehand it because some of them will have a curve to them. To find the location up here at the shoulders, what it's going to be is half the distance between her neck and that shoulder. So half the distance is where that princess panel will end up, as well as spaghetti straps, bra straps, swimsuit straps. So go ahead and find that here. So it's halfway from the shoulder to her neck. And double check this one too, because that first, I notice a lot of students make it too high, and it's actually lower than you think. So just make sure you've got it correct. And then you can connect back to the princess panel that we've already started to draw. Now you'll notice on the static pose that basically from the shoulder to the apex to the waist, realistically it's just a straight line. We could have connected the whole thing with a ruler. But it's good for you to do this in separate pieces again because later on when she's moving and doing stuff, it's not going to be as cut and dry as just a straight line. Let's find them now below the waist. So come over here to the top of the hip bones find the center and then come down here to her full hip at this point you have to ignore these two center points on her legs those are not what we want what we want here is the full hip coming back towards center front what is the halfway point And then the same thing on this side, full hip, halfway point. Just making sure you totally ignore these two things right here. Now when we connect this back to here, you want to mimic this curve shape. So her hip curve shape, we're doing something similar to that. It's got a slight curve to it. So if it helps, look at the curve first and then come over and get this. And now we have our princess panels. If you've done them correctly and everything looks right, then let's go ahead and darken them in. You'll also want to darken in center front for the torso and below, down at the swimsuit level. Down here, if you want to separate her underwear from her skin, something we can do is right along this princess panel right here, what you could do is something like a little zigzag stitch. It'll look like it's got a flat lock stitch on there and basically just doing rounded zigzags
If you want to put a little bow on here, you can do something like that as well. And then we can also just uh, shade along the corners, the outside edges. Just a little bit of shading coming into the underwears. And then if you want to emphasize this curve down here as well, shade coming up. Again, normally you won't do very much shading on your croquis, but this is just fun to do for um, having some a little bit of clothes on your croquis. I'm also noticing on my hand here, I just want to make her pointer finger a little bit longer, and her thumb looks kind of masculine, so I'm going to slim that down a little bit. At this point, I think if I keep going back to it, I'm just going to start making it worse and worse. So I'll leave it at that. Let's go ahead and get some of these guidelines back here down at the leg. So remember, the center of the leg is different than the center of the body here. So let's just lightly darken in the top of the cylinder. Double check the center of it. come down to the middle of the kneecap and then again from the knee come down to the middle of the ankle and down here at the ankles I have the bottom of the cylinder because if you were drawing leggings or yoga pants they would end right there <clears throat> let's get this side center cut Obviously, if you're doing some kind of lingerie or something, that would be her. The garter belt would attach there, or a center front seam would be there. Also, if you were doing some uh, dress pants with a center crease, like on a pair of slacks or something, or if you're drawing a skirt and it had a slit up the um, princess panel, they would line up right with that, the slit on her a vent or a skirt. That looks pretty good. Let's come up here and start to establish the apex of her bust and then putting on the basics of a bra. Really what's happening here is we just want to know where's the underwire on her bra as well as we already have the princess panel but we also want to know this cut here. So if you're doing like a, um, a swimsuit, spaghetti straps, a bra, as well as if you were doing a tank top or something, this would be the armhole for it. So if it was sleeveless, so this is acting as guidelines as well as having a bra for your croquis. So let's do one here now. So I'm going to switch to my lighter pencil. Make sure it's nice and sharp. <clears throat> we have two guidelines here. One of them is two heads down and this was the bottom of the armhole, and it's also her armpits. And then two and a quarter down was the apex of her bust. Realistically, this is too low for the apex of her bust. Her bust apex is actually above that. Also keep in mind that the bust area is rounded. It's a dome shape. So it wouldn't go straight across like this. It would dome upwards. If you were uh, making like a swimsuit and there was a seam right here, you would see it would curve outwards. So what we're going to do here is we want to first establish the, the width of the bra. So you can see here there's a little space at center front. So we'll come over here to center front along this level right here. This is two and a quarter heads down. 
and we're going to draw just a little space from here to here and that'll be the in-between area of her bra. The closer you make the space together, the larger the cup. So for instance, I'm just drawing like an A cup right here. But if you want to have a larger cup, then just draw these closer together here so you'll have more room for a larger cup. Now, whatever space you did here, you would do the same thing out here. So the distance from here to here, distance here to here. This is what we're going to work with for this center seam right here. It's going to arc up. So you're going to start at two and a quarter. You're going to arc upwards and come back to two and a quarter. And you're going to want to make sure that both arcs are doing the same thing. So for instance, I'm seeing one of mine's not the same as the other. So I'm going to come in and fix that now. So it's really important that these are symmetrical. So at this point, this will now be the true apex of her bust. So what you're seeing is this location right here, the apex of her bust, there and there. Now we want to start developing the underwire on the cups. So what you can do is, if you measure the distance from the apex to this, this little outside edge here, and you start to go from the apex heading downwards, and you're doing a half moon shape that will lead back right to this one here. So go ahead and draw that in lightly. Do the same thing over here and make sure that it's hitting the exact same level. So again, it would be the same measurement heading down. And then really look at it and make sure that they're totally even, symmetrical, everything is good to go before we move on to the next part. So if you like them, the next step we can do is we can start drawing in the underwire. And it's just going to be a really narrow area, just like you have on the swimsuit area on her underwear. This underwire is just going to be this fine little parallel line. So we'll go ahead and we'll have this one we already like. And you can decide at this point if your underwire is going to be slightly inside of that, making this a smaller cup, or outside of that, making a slightly larger cup. So on this example, I'll go slightly larger by going to the outside. The next step is going to be how this is joined is with a piece of fabric here in the middle. So you'll just curve down right here, up right here. And then going around the side of her body here, again, just like this one, you curve down, you can just curve down again. The next thing we want to do is similar to the cut of a sleeveless shirt or a bra or swimsuit, we want to go a little bit below the armpit here and curve and connect up to the spaghetti strap location right here and it's also the princess panel. Can you see that? So again we're going to go from below the armpit level curving up and connecting here at the princess panel and it's also the same as where your spaghetti strap would be. 
and then come across to the other side make sure you're at the same location as here and then we'll do a curve doing the opposite side Now something else you're going to want to know is, since this is the apex of her bust, if you actually made a bra cut right there, it wouldn't cover her enough. She would be falling out of it. So we still need the minimum amount of fabric going above this apex area. And that's what we're coming up with right here. So basically you can see here at two heads down, this is level with her armpit, and over here at the edge of the um, underwire, you can just kind of do a curve right up to meet with that. So again, this is along this two heads down area, meeting right up with this armhole and starting where the underwire was. And that gives you an idea of the minimum fabric you would need to cover her up. Now if you want to separate these out a little bit, I'm going to bring my underwire just a little bit higher on the ends here. And then let's go ahead and just shade this upper panel one direction and then mirror it on the other side. And then the under panel, we can shade it in the opposite direction. And mirror it on this side. And mostly that's just for your brain to know, hey, this is close. But the rest of these lines are actual guidelines for when you're drawing close on top of this. The last little bit is if you want to show just a tiny little peak of some cleavage, make sure that this is the underwire and the cleavage is inside of that. And the circle that it's following is the same as this apex. So you're just, imagine going around in a circle, you're just following that apex right there and there. So make sure down here I can still see your arrows from when you pop these calves out. I just want to know that you understood that and you used that technique. And then just double check that um, all your lines are in here. They're dark, they're clean, they're correct. Make sure you didn't accidentally erase something and you need to put it back in here. For the most part, this croquis is totally done. You'll see that um, if you draw this a few times, a, a few times over, you'll start to notice like, hey, I like this hand better, but I like that elbow better, and I like this foot better than I like this foot here, and stuff like that. And it's just one of those things where just keep drawing a lot, and then eventually you'll start drawing everything the way you like, and you'll also start developing your own style where if you want things to be rounded and sweet or a little more sharp and edgy, you'll start to develop that as you go. But it all comes down to the fact that you need to be drawing often. So this is it for the advanced version. For some of you, this will be on your page six. So you'll have your advanced version girl right here, side by side with this croquis. So make sure you submit to me your homework, having one, one, two, and a third croquis.